Hello and welcome to The Vital Truth. My name is Patty and I'm sure glad that you come to share this time with me. I had planned on sitting on this uh, message until after the holidays, but the Lord has really been dealing with me the last couple of days to go ahead and put this out there. So I know that there's somebody that this message is intended for and that you needed to hear it prior to the time that I myself was going to put it up that um, perhaps there's a little more urgency in the spirit for someone to hear this so I pray that the Lord um, quicken it to your hearts give you the wisdom knowledge and understanding that he desires for you to have and that it will accomplish everything that he has planned and purposed and set out and set forth for this to do. Uh, the title of my message here is going to be Wisest Serpents. Well, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16, Jesus said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Now I just want, I can't give you anything more than what he has shared with me and taught me. But at the same time, being a YouTube video and realizing that the human attention span is between 10 and uh, maximum 20 minutes, I also can't go to the depths um, that he has revealed these things to me. But I will give you enough that you will be able to go to him in prayer and let him teach you and lead you and guide you uh, however he chooses. If it's in the scriptures, if it's him speaking to you himself directly, um, whatever, you know, course he decides to take with you. Remain teachable and allow the Lord to reveal in your heart what this, what he intends for you to receive from this. But first of all, the word behold. You know, when I see that word, to me it stands out and it's like behold and it gets my attention. And it means to see, to know, to look, to understand and be aware. So Jesus wants us to say, hey, I he well, he's saying, hey, I want you to be aware. I want you to see and know and understand that I, Jesus, send you forth. And send you forth actually means that you are set apart and that you are being sent out. So, see, know, look, understand, and be aware that I, Jesus, am setting you apart and sending you out as sheep. Now, I, you know, Jesus speaks of the body of Christ and those that belong to him many times as sheep and him as the good shepherd. And I hear a lot of people, you know, make fun and mock and giggle and say, oh, you're just an old dumb sheep and you're this and you're that. But I wanted to bring to you just a, um, a small definition of sheep. This goes real deep and it's real interesting. If you ever get the time and opportunity, uh, it would you would enjoy and it would do you good to look it up. But one meaning of sheep means to walk forward advance now in the spiritual realm that has a lot of significance but getting back to the sheep as an animal did you know that the the sheep is one of and the lamb is one of the most vulnerable animals that there are they're very meek and mild. They're a gentle animal. 
They have no self-defense, no way to defend themselves against predators. They are totally dependent upon the master, the shepherd, to watch over them and to protect them from the predators that would come against them. Um, the only form of protection that is in them by nature is they have a flocking response and instead of scattering by nature they tend to flock together to where you know as they're eating they eat with their heads down and if they're all together in a large group it makes it much more difficult for a predator to pick them off one at a time. Other than the protection of the shepherd, the flocking response is all that they have. Also, sheep are not dumb like some people think. They have found that sheep can retain faces, faces of other sheep, or faces and voices of their shepherd for up to two years I believe I read now that's that's good they can be separated from them and still remember and I believe it's up to 50 faces that they can remember so that doesn't sound real dumb to me it sounds like they're able to recall discern they remember the voice, they recognize the voice in the face. So I'm beginning to see the analogy more clearer why Jesus said he was sending us out as sheep. Also, um, sheep do not like to be isolated and totally alone. And I took a quick look in the scriptures and saw how when Jesus sent out his disciples, he always sent them at least two by two, you know, two at a time. So the old saying that there's safety in numbers definitely had to stem from thinking of the sheep, sheep flocking. And another interesting fact about sheep is that sheep by nature follow um, they follow their master you can have five or six different herds of sheep all together drinking or in a pasture eating together and the master of a particular flock can call to his sheep and they will come out from amongst all the others and follow him. They know his voice. And that is so awesome to me because that's exactly how it was recorded in the scripture what Jesus said. My sheep know my voice. They follow me. And I know them. So then Jesus said, Behold, I want you to understand, see, look, and know, be aware that I, Jesus, set you apart, send you out as sheep. You're very vulnerable. You're going to be dependent on me for your survival because I'm sending you out amongst wolves. Without me, you will not survive. Without me, protecting you, watching over you, um, leading you, guiding you, and you following me and listening to my voice, you are too vulnerable to survive on your own amongst wolves. Now wolves travel in packs. They hunt in packs. They, they live, you know, within a pack. And there usually will be one that is the alpha, the leader of the pack, and all the others submit and take their orders from this one. But where there's one wolf, there will be others. 
And they are an animal that prey, not P-R-A-Y, as in our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, but they prey, P-R-E-Y, upon vulnerable animals for food. They're very aggressive. They strive even amongst themselves in their own packs for dominance, whereas sheep are non-aggressive. You can lead a sheep to slaughter and it will follow you and will never put up a fight. But wolves are very aggressive and they howl. And I think about how the devil as a roaring lion is howling like a wolf. How he tries to sneak in as a wolf in sheep's clothing amongst the herd to try to pick them off one at a time and devour. Um, that's pretty much, you know, you can get in depth uh, in your study of the wolf, but that's all I felt the Lord told me to bring out, how that a sheep is gentle and non-aggressive and a wolf is very dominant and aggressive. So definitely different characters, different nature, different plan and design. Um, a wolf is not dependent upon anyone to protect him or to lead him as a sheep is totally dependent if they want to survive upon their master their good shepherd. So then Jesus said, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents. Now, you know, I thought, hmm, I really need to see what Jesus meant by this because we always think, when I think of a serpent, a snake, I think of the devil. Now, Jesus I know would not instruct me to be wise like Satan. Satan's a mastermind, but he was not even wise enough to serve the Lord Jesus Christ. He left his first estate. He sinned. He had the best of the best, and he gave it all up. So that's not very wise in my eyes. So I wanted to look up about serpents. And why would Jesus tell us to be wise as serpents? Well, this is so interesting. When a serpent goes to move into new territory, one of the things that it does is it never announces its presence there. It's very quiet. It tries to blend in with the environment and not draw attention to itself. In nature, uh, they're so camouflaged that you can walk right by one and chances are you won't even see it. It will lay very still or it will try to get away from you, most likely. But they try to blend in and not alert anyone or anything to their presence. During this time, they evaluate and they discern that they're in a new situation and they're looking for places to hide them from attacks and places that they can be sheltered from anything attacking them. They also look for an ample food supply and they're always on alert for opportunities. When they settle in, they never act in haste. And they're wise enough to know and seize the moment. Now think about that. I, I had to really allow the Lord to teach me this. But we as Christians 
followers of Jesus, servants of his kingdom, many times we don't know what direction we're going to go. And we'll pray and pray and pray about a particular matter. Oh, Lord, what is your will in this? Lord, will you open a door for me in this area? How will I know that it's you, Lord? I'm praying that you will move in this situation, in this manner, so that I will recognize and know that this opportunity has come from you. Then we go away from prayer. God opens the door. The opportunity's made. And instead of us being wise like the serpent who realizes that in an instant, the moment he sees opportunity, he strikes. Well, instead of us being like that, we go back to prayer because we're filled with doubt, we're filled with unbelief, we don't trust Jesus, and we begin to pray again, Oh Lord, it looks like a door is open, but I have to make sure. Is this really you? Well, by the time you've convinced yourself that it is of Him, you go, the opportunity has already passed you by. You did not seize the moment. You did not recognize God. You didn't take the opportunity and strike. And so therefore you have lost out on the opportunity that God has given you. Now that's one area that I saw where the serpent is very wise. Another area, instead of, you know, just going out with a big megaphone and blasting people's heads off and preaching the kingdom of God and trying to rain fire and brimstone down on them all at once, wouldn't it be much wiser to scope out an area, discern the environment, see what's around, pray, be led by the Spirit, and allow God just kind of blend in without making a commotion for just a little bit. And let God show you and reveal to you what sources are there, resources, where you can be fed, where you can find shelter, who he wants you to minister to, show you the opportunities he's presenting. That would be wisdom as wise as a serpent. One thing that the Lord showed me is that most folks are still very defensive, always on the defense, always wired to the hilt and ready to come against you uh, the moment that you're not in complete and total agreement with them. They're defending themselves. They think they have to defend Christ. And I, I dwelled on that for a long time. And then the Lord showed me something and I thought, wow, I had never seen this before. He said, the story of Peter when Jesus, when they came to the garden to seize Jesus and to take him before the council, the high priest. Remember, Peter rose up and he cut off the servant's ear of the high priest defending Jesus and the one thing Jesus said was he commanded Peter to put up his sword and he said they that take the sword shall perish with the sword and what the Lord showed me was that he didn't need Peter to defend him he looked at Peter and he said do you not know that I willingly lay down my life I'm fulfilling the will of my Father in doing this. Peter, I don't need you to defend me. I could have at any time called twelve legions of angels, and they would have come and delivered me from this. And so many times today, we get so defensive, and we think we've got to defend Jesus, and we've got to, you know, 
we just do things just like Peter and the Lord has to rebuke us like he did Peter and remind us hey I want you to be vulnerable to me you are vulnerable I am your protector you're not my protector I'm the one who shepherds over you and takes care of you I am more than capable and able to defend myself you're not to seek vengeance on my behalf or yours I the Lord it vengeance belongs to me he says he takes care of those things and then the scripture goes on uh, to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves and you know I looked up and a dove is one of the most meek gentle little birds that there ever was they won't peck at you try to harm you they're just gentle and this probably has nothing to do with this lesson but I just get fascinated and and love these types of things when the Lord shows me but you know the dove was what a bird of choice that Jesus spoke about in that we see in the scriptures often and I thought about how you know the dove was not the first bird that Noah sent forth from the ark but the dove was the one that returned with the olive branch in its mouth and then again when Jesus was being baptized and the Holy Spirit came upon him in the form of a dove gentle, comfort, meek, humble. And then another thing I learned about the dove that I thought was really awesome is doves mate for life. They're faithful. They will remain with the same mate all of their life until that mate dies showing great faithfulness, kindness, righteousness, care toward one another. You know, Jesus looks at doves and, and sees them as harmless. They're not aggressive at all. So if you take and put all of that together, Jesus is saying, Behold, my children, those that I love, the sheep of my pasture. See and know, look and understand. Be aware that I, Jesus, your master, your Lord, your King, your Savior, the Good Shepherd, the door to the sheepfold, I set you apart and send you out as sheep that are vulnerable yet instinctively by nature know to follow I send you out at, in the midst of wolves where there's danger where they want to devour you where they won't come on you one at one but they'll be in a pack and they will unfairly aggressively attack you to destroy you but hear my voice and follow me I will keep you safe in me you are safe in me you are shielded you are protected be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves may the Lord Jesus bless you today I hope this has helped who it was intended for. It was a wonderful lesson to me. I appreciate everything Jesus teaches me as I learn at his feet. It's a very deep lesson and, and maybe some of you will want to continue and dig this out further. I know I have, but this is what I was given to share with you today. Make sure that you don't have the character in nature that Peter had um, showing forth 
the character and nature of the serpent that day that would strike out in defense we're only supposed to have the wisdom of the serpent and then be harmless as doves I love you all hope to see you back soon bye bye